Hi guys, so I've said on numerous occasions that Michael Gove is a slippery individual, someone not to be trusted, and we've seen perfect examples of that in the past when it came to Brexit. Now he's going to demonstrate his slipperiness once again in Parliament, where he was asked a question by a Labour MP about whether Boris Johnson had made that statement about bodies piled high in their thousands. Now Michael Gove, of course, being the slippery politician he is, doesn't answer the question directly. He does claim that he was attending the meeting, the cabinet meeting, but he didn't hear Boris Johnson make this statement, which is quite convenient because if he was in the meeting, surely he heard everything that was said in the meeting. He could have come out and said, no, Boris Johnson did not make this statement. But Michael Gove, as being the next person in line to take over from Boris Johnson, is happy to see Boris Johnson fall. If he defended Boris Johnson completely, then it wouldn't help his position. You have to remember that there's a bit of a, a fight going on over who's going to replace the current Prime Minister. And Michael Gove seems to be at the top of the list. And of course, he doesn't want to damage his position. Let's hear what he had to say in response to the question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We all know that the delay in locking down the country in lockdown one, lockdown two and lockdown three led to a higher toll, both in terms of lives and livelihoods. What I don't think anyone expected was to read on the front page of the Daily Mail today the quote that the Prime Minister said, let the bodies pile high in their thousands, a claim which has been subsequently verified independently by other journalists. So I think the Minister takes statements he makes at that dispatch box more seriously than the Prime Minister does. So can I ask him again to be absolutely categorical that he has never heard the Prime Minister say those words, that the Prime Minister didn't say those words, and that prior to arriving in the House this afternoon, he received assurances from the Prime Minister that he didn't use those words. Can he be absolutely clear and straightforward and honest about that? Now, there's a difference, of course, between not hearing something and Boris Johnson not saying something. Totally. Um, uh, as I pointed out earlier in, in, in response to uh, the question from the member, I think, for Aberdeen South, um, uh, I made the point that I had been uh, in a meeting in the Cabinet room with the Prime Minister. I would ordinarily go into discussions that take place in Cabinet committees for reasons that he would well understand. But I never heard the Prime Minister say any such thing. We were all wrestling with an incredibly difficult decision. I never heard the Prime Minister say any such thing. And then he goes on to talk about how, well, it was a very difficult situation. So isn't it interesting that he would jump from saying, I never heard the Prime Minister say something, to, well, it was a very difficult situation. If he was, he's in a sense denying something that happened, well, denying that he heard it, and then defending it. He jumped immediately from going, from saying, I didn't hear Boris Johnson say this, to, well, you know, we're under a lot of pressure. Well, which is it? It didn't happen, or you were under pressure? Because if you were under pressure, you were, in a sense, justifying what Boris Johnson said. Look, he was under a lot of pressure, and he said this, you know, on, he wasn't thinking. It just, he blurted it out without actually considering what he was saying then that's a justification, or it's not a, a very good justification, but it, it's at least a justification. It's a reason, an excuse. But you're not doing that. This is typical of Michael Gove. The decision to lock down necessarily imposes costs in other ways, as we're all aware. Uh, but but uh, it, the Prime Minister not only concluded at the end of the discussion that we had, which was a sober, serious and detailed discussion. See, once again, he's defending the discussion saying you know at the end of the discussion it was so it was um sober and detailed he's not denying that boris johnson said this state made this statement he's just def he's defending his own position that he didn't hear it and then he's going on to say of course how you know it we were under a lot of pressure but at the end everyone was calm He's implying that there was a period within that meeting, a part of that meeting, where people were not calm, where people were animated, people were angry, people were stressed. Things were said, perhaps, that uh, we now regret. But Michael Gove is distancing himself, of course, from all of this. 
that it was necessary to have that second lockdown. He also concluded, of course, that it was necessary, sadly, to have a third lockdown as well. I leave it up to you, but I think that Michael Gove um, is positioning himself as a replacement for Boris Johnson. I thought it would come down to two main candidates, Michael Gove and Rishi Sunak, but uh, we're not hearing a lot from Rishi Sunak at the moment. Michael Gove seems to be stepping forward. The knives are out for Boris, and Boris's wheels are coming off his bus. And you're going to start to see more and more politicians distancing themselves from the Prime Minister. And as I said before, it's going to be interesting the, uh, the back and forth that's going to take place in the House of Commons on Wednesday. Now, I truly hope that Keir Starmer and the Labour Party really go to town on Boris Johnson here. This is their golden opportunity. I know the SNP definitely will, but I really hope that Keir Starmer... Now, it's unfortunate that Keir Starmer has not mentioned anything about this. Perhaps he's keeping his gunpowder dry. But I really hope on Wednesday he comes out swinging here because this is an opportunity to bring down Boris Johnson. To, to create a, a gap, split between him and his party. The party are willing to throw him under a bus. They were willing to throw Theresa May under a bus. It's important to remember that the party will defend itself. They don't care about the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister will come and the Prime Minister will go. Boris Johnson is ripe for critic, uh, critique and uh, for scapegoating. So it's going to be quite easy for the party just to offload the responsibility of the pandemic, of Brexit and all of this onto one individual, that being Boris Johnson. And Michael Gove stepping forward to say, I'm the new guy, I'm going to replace uh, Boris Johnson, we're going to have a new management, everything is going to be better. And in a way, Michael Gove, who's a horrible, slimy individual, is in a sense more respected within the party than Boris Johnson is. Less of a rebel, it seems. So I think Wednesday is going to be extremely interesting. Let's see how Keir Starmer deals with this. Um, and I really do hope that the Speaker of the House does not let Boris Johnson off the hook once again. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?